Cue the ominous music. We're going to be talking about the biggest enemy and arch mimesis of anyone who loves piercings. The bump. That's right. Today I'm going to go through part one. We're going to cover uh, what they are and what the causes are in Body Piercing Basics, episode number 33. So stick around. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Dave. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since, well, 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio, located here in very sunny and warm Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you, I'm talking to you as an expert, as somebody who has dealt with piercing bumps for a very long time and still absolutely hates them. They're evil. First thing I need to tell you is... Regardless of how informative this video may be, what you may have found on the internet, etc., two primary things you need to do if you think you have a bump. The first thing is, is don't put off getting it taken care of. The second thing is see your piercer. If you don't feel like they're giving you information that's correct, go see another reputable piercer in your area. The longer you put it off, the worse it's gonna get, and nothing replaces sitting down with your piercer, talking your way through the whole what's going on and trying to come up with a solution to solve the problem. Now, there's a lot of different, re different types of bumps. There's a lot of different reasons why your body produces certain types of bumps and et cetera. So let's go through some of the more common ones. The first one is the most overused name on the internet, keloids. They are not keloids. Repeat after me, you probably don't have a keloid. Understand that. Keloid scars are something that will take surgical medical intervention to get rid of. If you are prone to keloiding, you are gonna know that. It's either part, it's because it's part of your genetic structure. Either you have family members that are prone to it or you yourself have experienced it. Um, if you are prone to keloiding, I would suggest avoiding high risk piercings when it comes to scarring. That would be, um, anything that comes in contact with stuff on a regular basis. Um, I have pierced people that are prone to keloiding in the past and they haven't had issues with certain piercings. Other piercings definitely had issues. Hypergranulated tissue. I might be mispronouncing it, but I guess I could put the wording hyper up here. What that is, is for one reason or another, instead of producing tissue the way we want your body to, which is inside to seal up that piercing, for some reason it'll continue outward. Um, these will be kind of the consistency of hamburger. They're very bright, very ugly, very, uh, they usually are kind of fluid filled. They look kind of more like a blister. Um, and they can bleed off and on. They usually not a lot of pain involved with them, but they can. The next one is scarring, most commonly hypertrophic scarring. Um, scarring is caused by abuse of the piercing. Uh, it tends to be more callus-like, where it's more dense tissue and it's more uh, almost like it's in layers, opposed to something that's fluid-filled. Abscesses and cysts. Abscesses and cysts are usually signs of a, that at one point in time you had a small infection or minor infection, uh, possibly deep inside the piercing. Your body isolated that content or that. Uh, that pathogen, that foreigner, and they are slowly push, they kind of slowly push it to the surface. Um, these can be very painful. Um, they usually have kind of a, they're definitely fluid filled. And if you think you have one, you should go see a doctor. Don't let your piercer lance and drain that and don't try to do it yourself. The issue could be is especially right next to the piercing where you have an open wound is that infected tissue could then work its way into the piercing or into your bloodstream and cause major issues. So don't let your piercer talk you into lancing things. They weren't trained to do that. Next type is glandular cysts. These are really, really common, or not really common, but they're more common on nostril piercings than anywhere else. It's usually caused by makeup or dirt, debris, et cetera, working its way into the piercing, and then it'll create what's called a glandular cyst. Um, it usually is very painful, it's uncomfortable, it'll form largely on the inside and then slowly push outward. They can get rather big and they are damn ugly and they require medical treatment to get rid of. 
The last one I'm gonna just lump into what we call piercing pimples. Uh, basically, they're kind of a combination of, uh, of hypoglycial tissue sometimes combined with a little bit of maybe some scarring to maybe a little bit of an abscess. We don't really exactly know what's going on. They're just kind of a catch-all. They usually form a little bit off to the side in most cases. Sometimes they form directly over it. Uh, they're not as red as 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 or dark red or not hamburger like as other forms of scarring are. Now, uh, what piercings are most prone to it? Piercings that get a lot of contact, uh, mainly ears, upper ear cartilage, and nostril piercings are probably the two that are most common to have issues with with bumps. Partly because of the tissue that we're piercing. Partly because of the fact that they come that those piercings tend to come in contact with a lot more clothing, bedding, towels, etc., um, in bumping into any things in contact with wet hair and cosmetics and everything else. That makes them more prone to these problems. So, what are the causes? Let's get into the causes. Um, first one, of course, I've already kind of talked about it is if you are prone to scarring, if you are prone to keloiding. Of course, you're going to be more prone to having bumps. Um, you should probably know this ahead of time. We've all healed a cut on our body, and how that cut reacted is a good indicator that if you have issues and raise scars, that if you puncture a part of your anatomy, that piercing is going to produce some scar tissue and possibly produce a bump. So if you're prone to that, it's something you probably should talk to your piercer about. Maybe do something that has less of a risk as far as bumps. Here's the big one, probably the number one cause, and that's abuse. And what's going on in, and this goes into majority of these causes. Um, just like if your shoes didn't fit correctly or you bought a brand new pair and decided to go to, I don't know, Disney World for the day, um, that rubbing and agitation against your foot is going to create hot spots. And as those hot spots continue to do that, your body starts to build up protective layers of tissue and fluids to protect itself. So if you're doing things like playing with the piercing constantly, sleeping on the piercing, getting it caught on clothing, bedding, towels, um, smacking yourself upside the head with a large mallet, um, all of those things, wearing constrictive clothing, all those things are going to create these hot spots. Your body eventually reacts by producing uh, scar tissue to kind of combat that and protect itself. The next one, contact with makeup, cosmetics, foundation makeups. is very prone in nostril piercings, but it can affect tracheus piercings, forward helixes, and ones that are on the front of the ear. Keep the cosmetics away from it. Deal with shiny nose for a little while. It's only a couple months. It's going to be, uh, you know, if you, if somebody sees you without makeup on your nose, it's a lot less embarrassing than having a giant red bump on it or a glandular cyst. Um, contact with wet hair. Always with upper ear cartilage piercings or cartilage piercings. Always dry your hair before the piercing has contact with it. That hair has contact with the piercing. Uh, it creates this moist area, which seems to kind of cause these bumps to continue or increase. Um, it also could lead to infections, fungal infections, all kinds of other problems. Uh, do keep the wet hair away from the piercing. Next one. And now we're going to start getting into some problems that may have occurred at the time of the piercing. The first one being is that you were given improper aftercare instructions. Um, either you're using uh, something as harsh as witch hazel or alcohol or Bactine or uh, Bacitrace and Zinc or um, Hibiclins, Betadine, Listerine, something that you were suggested by the person who is claiming to be a professional piercer to use on your piercing. It is so harsh that it's agitated the piercing that your body's just eventually gave up and said, okay, fine. I'm going to protect myself. Let's sticking up that tissue. Let's get some scar tissue going here, boys and girls. That can cause an issue. Also not being informed that you need to avoid contact with the piercing and isolate the piercing. Both of those things can lead back to problems, including bumps. Next one, piercing was done at the wrong angle. 
Piercings should be, in most cases, depending on the anatomy, should try to get that piercing through in the shortest amount of tissue that is going to be well anchored into the tissue. Meaning, you want to do it basically straight on. If it's done like this, that means it's going to be a much longer piercing healing period and it's going to create hot spots on both sides depending on what jewelry you're wearing and your body's going to produce this bump to try to protect itself. Um, the jewelry is of low quality. Same thing, body trying to protect itself against abusive metal rubbing against the piercing. Either the ends are wrong or too heavy, or maybe there's sharp edges or points. Maybe there's the surface of it wasn't polished properly, so there's uh, raised areas that are agitating the inside when it gets shifted or moved, just like it does naturally from walking, et cetera. Um, any type of movement will slightly make the jewelry move. Um, improper jewelry, or uh, low quality jewelry can cause those issues. Also, if it's made of a substandard material, sometimes your body will react to that by building up scar tissue. The jewelry is the wrong type or size. Uh, this is probably the biggest one of them all when it comes to uh, piercing or piercer error. And usually it's a sign that the person that's piercing has no little or no experience. Um, a lot of things can go into this. Uh, if the if the jewelry is, um, there are just certain piercings that do better with straight jewelry, some that do better with curved jewelry. Um, the problem with curved jewelry, especially rings, is if the ring is so small that it's such a tight curve that 40% of the jewelry is actually inside the piercing. Um, I had a client come in, or a future client hopefully, who had had a piercing done elsewhere. They did an anatrachis. They did it with a, uh, what I would guess is roughly about a quarter inch ring. Um, the tissue amount that they went through was close to a quarter of an inch. Um, there was massive amounts of scarring on both sides. Uh, it's just, I, there was nothing I could do other than remove the jewelry. Um, because it's such a curve, you have that same problem with the angle of the piercing being wrong. It's creating hot spots and it's taking longer for your body to produce the tissue. So it kind of gives up and starts producing scar tissue to protect itself. It could have easily been solved if the jewelry was changed earlier in the healing process, or if the jewelry was done or the piercing was done with the right jewelry in the first place. This is something that is, is there's a lot of different thought on types of jewelry that work best on certain piercings. You should talk to your piercer. Don't insist on that tiny little bitty ring because you want it exactly like the Instagram picture. Pick the right jewelry. Understand that jewelry that's initially pierced with is never a final jewelry. You can always change out to something. The same problem can occur if the jewelry is extremely heavy or has sharp um, prong type settings that are digging into the piercing and causing issues. And now you know. Um, you change the jewelry too soon. This is a really common mistake with a lot of people. They've had the piercing for a couple months. The person maybe said, you know, it takes a minimum of eight weeks to heal. They decide that it's healed or maybe six weeks in, they decide it's healed. Um, they get a new piercing piece of jewelry for Christmas or a birthday and they decide they need to try it out. Yes, you may get the jewelry back in. The problem is, is that in the process, you may have dislodged or caused issues with the piercing. Um, you might have, uh, cause tear, agitation. The shape of the jewelry is different than the original jewelry. So now your body thinks that it's, it's abusive because it's created wear marks or hot spots. And then suddenly you have bumps. The other problem with doing this is that often people don't buy jewelry of the best quality. So there's that issue. Plus, if you're buying something at the mall or somewhere that it, it, it's mass produced, a lot of it comes from third world countries. Um, chances are the person who uh, put that piece of jewelry in that bag did not wash their hands before they did it. And just because it's in a sealed cellophane plastic bag does not mean that it's sterile. So it can cause infections. Whenever in doubt of whether or not a piercing is healed or if it's okay to change the jewelry, go see your piercer. Let them decide for you. They'll be happy to do that. And they'll probably even help you change the jewelry for you or autoclave it and sterilize it for you. Um, the last one, 
And that is that you may have had a minor infection and were unaware of it. Um, and this leads to abscess and cysts slowly working their way to it. Uh, it it's not completely, uh, and it may not have been your fault. It may have been your fault, but it's sometimes infections can occur during those first six to eight weeks. And you just think it's a normal reaction. Your body does its duty. Your immune system kicks in. They isolate it. They can't really completely kill it off. So they start pushing it to the surface and then it forms as a bump off to the side and then needs to be lanced and drained, or you wait for it to go through its process, which I really don't advise, especially if the piercing is still healing. So that covers it. That's the um, types and causes. This is the part one. I'm, next week, I'm going to cover um, what I'm going to suggest as far as getting rid of it, going through that process in suggestions. We'll be posting that a week today, next or a week from today, next Thursday. Um, I hope you learned something. If you did, uh, please give me a thumbs up. If you would like to see more of these videos, including the second part of this, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a notification. If you feel like you have a bigger question or I didn't cover something, or maybe I opened up a whole new can of worms of questions that you may have, please post a comment. I usually answer them if I have time. If you have additional information that you'd like to add or you've had experiences with getting rid of bumps, feel free to do that. Understand that uh, I don't suggest giving people advice over the internet without knowing exactly what's going on, but you know, tell us what the experience was like if you would like, because um, we're all about sharing information and starting a healthy debate. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel and be stylish, check out our merch store. There's very similar designs there, um, covering kind of body art in general. And, um, they come in everything from hats and cups to t-shirts to everything you could possibly imagine. Even some hoodies as fall is going to be today's the last day of summer. So it's going to come right anyway. Um, until next time. Hopefully your piercings heal with and without issue, and of course, without bumps. <laughs> and if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your piercing needs in the future. Good day, everybody. Enjoy it.